going people I know this isn't entirely arcade right here, but this is one of my favorite games of all time, especially for the PS1. Hoping I don't have to... Probably have to. Alright, let's hope I get this on the first try. I have a hot key to switch between the uh, digital and analog. Yeah, I'm going to have to. Ooh, I hope this is it. That's not it. There it is. Okay. Another thing I haven't done yet with my rocket launcher setup is the PlayStation, and that's putting in which ones are digital and which ones are analog. Should be working. It's just working the other day. Come on. There we go. It's squished. I already lost. That's throwing me off because it's squished now. I think there's a problem with my uh, bezel. I have a zero IQ. How's it going, Virgil? Let me check a different game here and see. Because that game was working perfectly fine a couple days ago. It's amazing how something can work one day and you don't do a thing to anything and a couple days later it doesn't work. See, there it goes. It's perfectly fine and it's nothing I'm switching here. So... Let me try it one more time. Yeah, it still looks squished. Hmm. That's a shame. You're avoiding work at work. <laughs> That's the only way to work. So now I gotta play something else. Darn it. The last time I streamed, I got a uh, 
copyright notice for this right here for Fightcade because I had a video playing there. And so I figured better safe than sorry, I just removed the video for while I stream. Out of a three hour stream, they picked 30 seconds. Go figure. Um, okay, I gotta find something here. Yeah, it's a PC in a cabinet. I can't go with, like, RetroPie or anything like that because, um, I like to put PC games on there and RetroPie can't run some of the higher-end arcade games, so... And plus I have, like, uh, Phase Shift, I use it as a jukebox, uh... Some PC programs I run off there. It's just far too much. Hmm. I really gotta get a four-way joystick though. I only have an. I got an eight-way, and it's so difficult to play those four-way joystick games. And when I can do them, it's just not easy. You ever just love a game, but really don't understand it? Like, Crazy Climber. I understand it. Don't, don't get me wrong. But the controls are just way out of whack. But I still love the game. Yeah, I don't know if that would work out <laughs> with Rocket Launcher. Oh, no. Yeah, there's a good joystick uh, that I've had my eye on, and it's one of those where you lift up the joystick and turn, and it locks it between a four-way and an eight-way. That's what I'd like to change it out for, at least one of them. But see, the problem is if I change one, then it's going to be a different feel than the other one, and I have to change them both. So, I think it was like fifty dollars for the uh, for the stick itself for one. I gotta pick something here. <clears throat> oh, I got an idea. Yeah, this stuff gets expensive. Here we go. This game is crazy. For anyone in the channel who hasn't played it. It's a lot of fun. It gets frustrating around level 3 or 4. But let's even hope I can get there right now. Okay, so B. And that's not B. Oh, that's right. I haven't played in a bit. You gotta stop it on the green, and then if you mess up, you gotta balance it. With left and right. Oh, jeez. Okay, 
Come on. Yeah. I'm not gonna make it. I already screwed up too much. Oh god, I want a gun on my arcade so bad. You don't even lie in. I would love to have two guns on here. I'm doing terrible at this. I usually don't have this much trouble on the first level. But this is the harder of the two choices. There's an elevator one. That's easier than this. Oh, come on. Oh. Come on. It's so sensitive. Ah, come on. I think that's the last step. Okay. I got, um, I try to play the DDR games, and I love the instrument type games, stuff like that. I have, uh, I collect video games, and I went to somebody's house one time, and they asked if I could take out a TV for them, and if I took out the TV, they'd give me some video game stuff for free, and it turns out it was like a box full of games. And expensive games. It had the whole Dot Hat collection in there, uh, a bunch of GameCube games and stuff. Um, a digital system selector. It had uh, one of the cool things it had was a oh shit, I'm not paying attention to that. Was a uh, titanium dance pad he gave me before I left, and it apparently is like three four hundred dollars or something for this thing, and he just gave it to me. So I've been getting into the dance games a little bit. Move, move, move. I'm trying to move. Okay. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, I go to um, Goodwill a lot and find stuff like that. I used to find... Uh, guitars and drum sets and uh, dance pads and stuff like that for real cheap I'd find them brand new in the packaging and everything for like two dollars or something and I don't even know where this card went I don't find that stuff anymore I've never done this bonus game Oh my god, what is going on? I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> A sidewinder? The one shaped like a boomerang? 
Yeah, I used to have one of those a long time ago. Those are really comfortable controllers. It almost feels like it's got a... I don't know, it feels like hard gel. It's hard to explain. I have never passed this level, by the way. Mm. When you get hit with something, the cart goes a little crazy for a little while. Oh, shoot. And there I go. Yeah, I like, um, I like weird controllers. You know, I, um, best controller I ever found was at a yard sale. We have this thing called Garage Mahal, and it's like 150, 200 yard sales all at, in the same day. And it's right in our neighborhood. I literally just walk out my front door, and it's going on all around me. Um, I've lost all concentration for the game now. <laughs> but couple years ago I got an Xbox with some controllers in the in the box with it and didn't think anything of it but there was a controller in there with a weird sticker on the back oh this game is tough there was a controller in there with a sticker on the back that didn't say Xbox so I assumed it was some kind of like um, maybe Chinese knockoff controller oh my god you can't even see the second one coming Chinese knockoff controller or something um, and I left it in the box and put it in my closet and then eventually put it in the, a container with the rest of my Xbox controllers. And then one day I took it out and decided to look it up online and the words on the back were Dakota. And it turns out it was a rare prototype controller for the original Xbox. And I wound up, I bought the Xbox in the box with the controllers for like 10 bucks and I wound up selling the controller for $275. So that was that was a good find there. Probably my second best find. My first one was last year's Garage Mahal, where me and my kid were walking down the street and we weren't finding any games or anything, thinking it's all dried up. And there was a, oh my God. You look away for a second and you're done for in this game. There was an elderly lady sitting on a, on a the, a stairway on her porch and uh, she had a I give up <laughs> I can't concentrate on it she had a um, a couch out there and then I saw something else in the grass so I looked further and it is a complete in box I didn't know at the time but all I saw was the box a Donkey Kong Nintendo 64 the green edition and so I ran up there and I said uh, how much for the game and she's like I don't know, 10 bucks. And I said, sold. Took the 10 bucks out, gave it to her. When I got it home, the system and the controller are like brand new, like never used. They're still in the bags, and the bags are taped closed. The system was never touched. The game in there looked brand new. The only thing wrong with it was the box is slightly water damaged, and the instruction booklet with the paperwork that goes in there was water damaged. It was all stuck together. But the styrofoam looked white, brand new. Um, I mean, definitely it didn't lose that much value, I'll tell you. And you can always replace the paperwork. But that system for 10 bucks in the box, that's, that's probably my, my best find that I had to pay for. But yeah, I go to, I try to go to yard sales and garage sales, but mostly I'm, I got, uh, Garage Mahal. That's it. Once a year. Wow. Nice.
That was 10 years ago, man. You know, if only it were 10 years ago again. Barely anybody was collecting back then, and it was so easy to find stuff. I mean, it was still hard to find rare stuff, but it was easy to find a lot of things out there in the wild. Um, you'll have to excuse me for looking that way and not at the camera, because I got the camera over there, and I got the chat over there, so gets a little backwards um yeah i had some guy who i was helping with uh cody putting cody on to a uh what was it a boxy box i don't know if you know what those are but um like a little media center thing a small computer anyway so he didn't know what he was doing and he wanted me to put it on there for him i worked in the electronics department at, at walmart and we were talking for a bit, and I told him I knew about that stuff, so he gave me his number, I gave him mine. And so he came over one day and to, for me to do it, and the guy paid me like 40 bucks to do it, which was crazy, and I told him it was too much, but... Um... Oh my god. Now that would have been money right there. Because you know they would have put some type of advertisement on there somewhere. But yeah, he came over and uh, I did the job for him. And then he saw the game room and he's like, you collect games? And I said, yeah. He's like, my brother's got a bunch of games he's, he, he doesn't want. They're just sitting in the garage. I was like, really? He's like, yeah. You want me to check and see if uh, he wants to get rid of them? And I said, sure. Why not? And so about maybe a week later, he texted me and said he got the games if I want to stop by his house. So I went over there. He had a Master System with about 15 games. The Master System did not work, but I opened it up and, and uh, fixed it. Um, I had to resolder a piece on it, but it works like new now. It had, uh, 3D glasses for the Master System in the box. A Intellivision, um, like 40 Intellivision games. A uh, Nintendo with all the wires and hookups and stuff. Um, like 12 or 13 Nintendo games. Yeah, I know, right? It's crazy. Um jeez, there was there was more. I don't even remember. There were instruction booklets for for systems and things that he didn't have anymore and um a bunch of weird controllers in there and stuff and anyway, so I asked him how much he wanted for it and he told me 50 bucks and I said, "Are you sure?" And he said, yeah, 50 bucks is, that's fine. You, do, you did that job for me. Even though he already gave me 40 bucks for doing the work for him, which was just putting Cody onto a boxy box, which is like 20 minutes of work. He was like, yeah, you did that. He'll, he'll be cool with 50 bucks. And I said, okay, 50 bucks it is. So he gave me the stuff. And like I said, the master system didn't work, but it was an easy fix. Everything else worked good. I know there was more than that in there. And I know I already had all the Nintendo games that were in the box. Um, I wound up flipping them and, and getting a little bit of profit off the top. Not much, but most of the stuff he sold me for 50 bucks I needed. Um, um, the best way to learn how to set up Hyperspin. Well... I can I can say one thing for sure. Definitely don't go go with one of those pre-configured drives. I'll tell that to anybody. You don't want to start there because you're just going to have more problems than than it's worth. I mean, most people who get those drives just pull the stuff off and wind up doing it themselves, anyways. Um, yeah, I agree, Virgil. It is it is a fun job, but yeah, it's just not it's not worth it. Well, that's good, Brian. Now you're off to a good start. Um, learning hyperspin. I know that Simply Austin has some videos. Um, oh, God. Buying a drive, you'll never get it set up because that just turns people away from it. I think that's why some people have hate for hyperspin. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not like a diehard hyperspin person or anything like that. I, I, I know rocket launcher top to bottom. I know hyperspin enough to get it basically set up, but um, I'm waiting for the day to switch to launch box, that's all. Um, but as for setting it up, I mean, it's really not not that 
difficult. There's plenty of guides out there on YouTube. It's really not difficult to set up if you use a program like Rocket Launcher with it. Um, if you tried and gave up, um, most likely you were trying when like Hyper Launch was out. And I'll tell you, I set up Hyperspin with like 60 systems or something like that, like six years ago when Hyper Launch was the thing. And that's when you had to basically put in code on your own and compile it in, uh, I, think, I think they used, uh, it was AHK or Python. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. But you had to compile it, AHK, almost certain now. Um, so you would, if you want to put a new system in, you'd have to do a lot of research, figure out how it goes in there, have the right code, and sometimes the code you find doesn't work for you. You have to put different code. It was just a, a mess in my opinion, but it worked. It was how they got it to work. Back then, it was really intimidating. But now, if you use Rocket Launcher and you learn how to set up Rocket Launcher properly, which there's plenty of, of videos. I know Simply Austin does videos on Rocket Launcher, and I plan to do some in the future. If you tag it with Rocket Launcher, it makes it simple. Because Rocket Launcher, basically, this is what you do. Um, you're going to... I have to turn my headset down because I can't concentrate with the music in the background. Um, well, if you're looking for a mini install or something like that, there's a website called Arcade Punks or ArcadePunk.com. They have all sorts of stuff, and I know they have a starter install where you can put that in. It's got a bunch of basic systems, nothing major. Um, I think it's like a 130 or 140 gigabyte file. I mean, it's it's a start, and then. Um, who else is out there? Bolt-On. If you look up Hyperspin Bolt-On Edition, there's that as well. Um, you know, these are people who are doing the work for free and not charging for it. And those people I'm I'm okay with. So, you know, the drives are a different thing. But these are people who, especially Bolt-On Edition, they, if you, if you check out their YouTube channel, they're basically just giving you the packs like here's the nintendo 64 pack and you just drag and drop it that's all you have to do now um yeah yeah the redirect stuff now what i do suggest is to if you go the bolt-on edition um just get one get one system drop it in there examine it see how it's set up and then do a couple yourself because just putting it together with someone else's stuff won't teach you anything. And, and when you have an issue, you won't know what to do about it. It's better to learn at least a little bit about the, the way it goes. Um, so start with something like uh, NES and examine the... I don't know how much you want to put in your system or if you just want MAME or whatever you want. I don't know. But, um, you know, you could break it down here because i believe they do that too to the different classic sessions and stuff like that but yeah just get one and then learn from that and and move forward from there but it's pretty simple i mean you you have like i said if you use rocket launcher it simplifies the whole launching thing if you don't use rocket launcher you're going to kind of be stuck using hyper launch which is different um thank you uh and with Rocket Launcher, all you have to do is just select the plugin as Hyperspin, since that's your front end. And then you're going to, um, it reads your, no, what what you want to do is, I'll, I'll go in order, okay. I'll try to do it quickly, I can't get too much, too intricate about it, but, okay, so the first thing you do is you're going to open up, um, H, what's it, HQ, Hyper HQ, I think it's called. Um, I haven't had to mess with it in months. So you're going to open Hyper HQ and you're going to add your system to the main menu. Okay. Um, I can actually show you on the screen. Why not? I can always load back up into uh, Hyperspin. So give me a second here. Uh, 
I'll load up my rocket launcher UI and I'll load up Piper HQ. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, and don't be intimidated by all this either if you haven't used Rocket Launcher. It's not that bad. I'm actually going to make a video very soon. Uh, if you guys aren't subscribed, you probably should if you want to know more about Rocket Launcher because I'm going to make a video going through every single tab of Rocket Launcher explaining what everything does. It's going to be an entire breakdown of the whole program. All right, so the first thing you do, open up Hyper HQ. And then you're going to go to Main Menu Wizard. And you're going to add a new item to the main menu. I'm obviously not going to do it now because I don't want to mess it up. But um, So once you once you press Add New Item to Main Menu, you're going to put in your system name. You're, it's going to tell you where, ask you where you want it, if you want it, uh, where you want it on the wheel. And you'll select the spot. And it will say, is this an executable or is it, uh, is it, it does it have a uh, sub wheel? So if you're running like MAME, you would say, yes, it's uh, it's a sub, it has a sub wheel. So you select that. Um, and then it's pretty much that simple. And then once it's in there, you'll go to wheel settings. You'll find your emulator, which let's say it was MAME. And you'll point the executable, you'll point that to your executable file. Okay. Oh, shit, I just messed it up. Oh, well, I fixed it. Um, that's MAME. Always something you want to hear when someone's giving you directions, huh? Oh, shit, I messed it up. So then you're going to point the ROM path to your ROMs. Me, I, I have a different setup, so never mind. Mine says dummy MAME ROMs because I have mine in separate segments. So I have Capcom, Konami, Nintendo, Sega. And I, I use a dummy MAME uh, ROM folder, which just has empty zip files with all the names because I want to... I'll show you why. Where's it at? Where's it at? I want to be able to read all of the main games that I have when I do a scan on Rocket Launcher. So I set it up that way. You don't you don't have to set it up that way. Um, see, 18, 1,811 ROMs. So found. So that way I can go here and see exactly what I have. Uh, but you're going to point that to your ROMs, and then you just put zip or whatever the extension is. Um, yes, I use command line. Yeah, I don't use the UI version. You can use the UI. You can use MAME UI. But I use the, the command line version. Just just no UI on it at all. Because I don't, I don't really need that part of it. Um, doesn't matter what you set for win state, really, because Rocket Launcher is going to take care of that. Um, and you just put your extension. So all you have to do is just go to it. Execution is hyper launch. PC game is disabled. You point it to your executable, point it to your ROMs, set the extension, and you're done. And then you can close that. And then you just open up Rocket Launcher, the UI program. After you point it to your, see this default plugin right here? You're going to want to have that set to hyperspin. That's important. It's going to have all these on here. Never mind those. It's going to have all these on there. So you need to find whatever your front end is. Default front end path. You're going to point that towards your front end exe file. All this stuff will already be set. Everything else will be set. So all you have to do is get your default plugin and your front end path. Why are there three sets of MAME? I'm not seeing which ones you're looking at, but there's actually hundreds of sets of MAME because it goes through um, all the different versions. Uh, it depends on what you want. Um, are you referring to... Uh, Try to figure out what you mean, three sets of MAME. Are you referring to the high score versions or the stuff like that? 
Okay, so once you have those two settings set up, then you go to uh, your emulators tab, and you're going to select your emulator right here, default emulator. You just press the little magnifying glass, and you go to where your emulator is for that, that particular one. So MAME Global. And then you're going to press the button to, you press, uh, you just double click it and it'll go through. Oh. Yeah, they're older versions. I actually use uh, 1.46. And, and I use an older version because um, they changed some things after 60. That I didn't, I didn't like. Um, oh, all right, man. Have a good night. All right, so uh, Brian, you're still there, right? I hope I didn't confuse you. You ran off. <laughs> okay. All right. So once you set your default emulator to whatever it is you're working on, make sure it's this here. So if you set Konami Classics to MAME, it's, well, okay, Konami Classics will work. But if you set uh, Daphne to MAME, it won't work. So make sure you're on your right tab right here. All right. And then you select your emulator for that particular one. And then you put in your ROM paths. If you just have one ROM path, <laughs> if you just have one ROM path, that's all you need. But I have the classics in there, so I keep all the ROM paths under MAME. So once you have that, you can go to games, audit, and your game will start up after it uh, audits. You could test it. I mean, it's really simple. You, you you officially have a system set up now. Now, from that point on, it becomes making everything look pretty. Pretty much that's what it is. So, you know, when you click on the game and go up to this little rocket, it's going to launch your game. It's going to work. So, I mean, that's pretty much all there is to it. And you just rinse and repeat with every system. Now, some systems require more work than that. Um, they require structure with the uh, actual folders and stuff. Like, uh, let's get an example down here. So, like... Let's see, let's see, let's see. Hyperspan emulators. Trying to think of one. Okay, so like Daphne. Daphne's a cool one to have on an arcade, but it requires specific things to happen. Like you have to have your frame files, you have to have the actual ROMs in separate folders. Um, frame file, nope. Frame files can actually be anywhere. It doesn't matter. I don't want to throw too much at you. I would just take one system at a time. You know, you could take the NES and, and start with that or whatever you want to start with. But I'm only suggesting NES because it's really simple. It's extremely simple to get started on. Um, Super Nintendo, Genesis, they're all easy systems to start with. Um, and then, like I said, once you get to that point, you know, I'll show you what I what I'm offering on my channel here. Um, I do plan to do those tutor tutorials. I've been busy with some other things, but basically, this is what I work on. I um, I do the fades. This stuff here. Um, and most of my work goes into like hyper pause. Or, excuse me, pause. They don't call it hyper pause anymore. So everything, when you pause the menu, this is why rocket launcher is really important, in my opinion. A lot of people bypass it because they don't want to deal with it, but 
if you put effort into it and you put the time, it's well worth it. And you know, I, I offer all these things for free on my channel, on my download section. But you know, I do the menu logos up there where it says artwork, and, and when you switch, it, go, it turns to boo. And I have all the system artwork controllers and boxes and stuff like that that I've worked on. And the uh, game artwork is in there. Uh, we've got magazines for each system in there. Um, TV commercials and documentaries and all kinds of stuff on there. I've got soundtracks for... Right now I'm covering every Super Nintendo, every NES, um, 900 main games, um, there's something else. I don't know. I've got quite a bit of music on there. And a bit of music from each of the main systems out there. And you know, it, it keeps track of your statistics in here, and, and uh, you're able to save and load games and so on and so forth. Keep controller profiles. It's well worth the trouble. It really adds a lot to to an arcade machine. Now, it probably is even better if you have it on a uh, HTPC in your living room to be able to sit on your couch and do all that, but. It's just as cool to have it on the on the machine. So, I mean, this video right now that I'm recording does not have DVR turned on with YouTube. So you won't be able to rewind right now. But I'm actually going to upload the stream. Let me get back into hyperspin. I'm actually going to upload the stream when it's done. And you'll be able to go back over that. And, and get the steps all over again if you need them. I'm at the uh, 43 mark, 43 minute mark right now, so I think I started talking about it at about 33, 32, something like that, just so you have an kind of idea. Ah, there you go. I tried Daphne last stream. Um, no, just a regular Windows 7. I stripped it down myself, though. I mean, I got rid of all the shit that you don't need with it. That's all I really had to do. I mean, the, the PC in here is powerful enough to uh, to deal with hyperspin. If, if I put LaunchBox on there eventually and have trouble then I'll, I'll think of a different way to go about it, but right now, Windows 7, like, a lot of people use it where it starts up and skips, bypasses a lot of Windows 7 stuff, um, but uh, I can't do that because I run certain programs on here that require... Um, Explorer to run like my I run a uh, graphic equalizer when my jukebox plays and when I'm playing the Guitar Hero Arcade it uses that graphic equalizer on my marquee monitor so without that it won't even start up um, what did I use to strip it down um, pretty much just went in and, and uninstalled everything that was not needed um, and Um, got rid of uh, startup screens and stuff like that. Replaced them with black screens. And... Although that's turned off right now. I have a, a program that gets rid of all the startup and stuff like that. Uh, and you know, you go into MS Config and you take away a lot of programs that Windows just fluffs it up with. And You got basic shit like Adobe Update and... Um, uh, Windows updates and, and, uh, just a lot of crap and, uh, just got rid of all of it. It's basically just, I, I from the moment I turn my computer on, I have hyperspin, 
Event Ghost. Um, Hyperspin Event Ghost and X Patter. That's it. Nothing else. No background programs at all. Um, yeah. Uh, I uh, I don't have that option. Let's put it that way. I can't really go further into that. But I don't have the option to use a different version of Windows right now. Limited funds? I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> I got the cheapest one I could find. Wink. Let's <laughs> kind of hope that Slipstream would pop in because he had some questions about Mega Upload and stuff, and uh, I had some long answers for him and. Uh, I I haven't looked. I'll have to take a look in the in the bargain bin. <laughs> I need to. I'll be I'll be right back. Give me a couple minutes. I shall return, and I need to. Pick something to play, I don't know what. Maybe I'll try Streets of Rage 2 again, because I almost beat it last time. to warm up. So it can kill you!
Okay, so what was changed? Some games broke. I don't remember at the time when I was looking. Um, yeah, I'm on 146 or 148, something like that. But I just remember looking in the uh, the change log for MAME and some of the games that I liked had problems then. You know, when you fix one thing, when you're dealing with thousands of files, another thing breaks, so. Kind of turned me off from updating there. I figured I'm happy where I'm at. There's not really much as far as MAME goes that's that's come out since then that was workable that, that I would probably play, so. Just left it where it's where it's been, and I've been using one four six one four eight whatever for like, geez, four or five years or something like that, for a long time. Hmm, that might have been one thing that I read. Cause I play the cave games. I don't know if they added it back because there's some people that I know that were saying they weren't working. I play them through MAME still, though. I mean, it just... It seems compatible with mostly everything, so I, did, I didn't really see the need to change. <coughs> you know, if it ain't broke, then don't fix it, I guess. A lot of people like to stay up to date, and, uh... And, uh... Every time an update comes out, they update their program and all their ROMs and stuff, and I got way too much other stuff to worry about. <laughs> Than, than doing that every time it comes out, you know. <clears throat> My kids mostly play the MAME games. So, and they're happy with it, you know. My youngest... My five-year-old doesn't even play MAME, though, really. My, my older one does. The 13-year-old. She's 14, sorry. My youngest plays uh, Mario Kart Double Dash. Yeah, Lord Monk, it's, it's, it, it hasn't changed a whole lot. It's To me, it just seems like more broke than than was fixed. Uh, Taito Type X is PC launcher games. I, I launch them as PC games. Uh, it requires add-on executables to work, but uh, Simply Austin actually has those as, as well available. And I got them from him, I believe. Uh, it, it gives you executables for the programs, and it gives you executables for programming the, the controls. And it's really good. It's really easy to use. Uh, I did run into a couple of walls at one point where the control configuration wasn't working, but I moved around some files and mixed and matched a little bit, and it wound up working. Um, I don't remember... I might as well just go to my file system and, and leave Hyperspin off at this point. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, it's Well, it's it's got to be an EXE for each ROM. It has to be. But I think, if I recall, it's the same EXE. Like, the same coding. They were compiled the same way. It's just... They point to that specific file in that folder. That's it. Um, and I believe that they're all called game.exe or something like that. You know, somebody somebody ripped the Taito games and then and, and said, here you go, here's the ROMs. And then somebody else came along and made the stuff to, to start them. Yeah, shaders are nice. Um... I didn't realize there were audio improvements. I do have some issues with, like, uh, older games in MAME, like Donkey Kong, where it's uh, it skips a little bit in the beginning. It's funny to me, some of the newer games work perfect, but then you get the older games like Burger Time and Donkey Kong, and they have sound glitches. But, uh, you know, what can you do? I have to change the audio latency for that, and I realize changing the audio latency effects latency overall and response time and stuff for your controls but you know i'm not playing for competition i just play for fun so donkey kong is literally one of the only main games that i mess around with that and uh turn demo crisis uh i'll play the street fighter games once in a while and killer instinct that's about all i play on mame the, my 14-year-old plays the rest of the stuff. 
Um, yeah, you are using the loader program, Brian. That's the loader. Uh, that thing has been phased out for a couple of years now. You no longer need that loader. No, uh, Donkey Kong requires separate files for certain versions of MAME, especially if you're using RetroPie, but not for regular MAME. It just, it's just the, the regular ROM. Well, see, Lord Monkus, that might be something I'll look into. If, if, I'm gonna have to look that up and, and grab it. And if that fixes my audio issues, that would be enough reason to switch. But not if it, at the cost of breaking some games that I like, you know. You know, I know one of them, one of the big ones during one of their updates was something about Street Fighter's colors being off or something like that. No, I, I was something like that. Or Marvel vs. Capcom or something like that. And I was like, oh no, not gonna get not gonna take this update. So it's just random things. It's a, it's pros and cons with every update, but the latency thing. Like I said, I'm not doing competition, but it also would be nice to have zero latency, so Yeah, you definitely wanna get rid of that loader. Um and look up Simply Austin's channel and get the uh the files that he's got. I won't. I won't re re-upload them or anything on my channel because that's his thing. He did all that. So yes, it does, Lord Monkus. And I got enough stuff I do on my channel alone. Not to mention I have two kids and and a girlfriend who always wants to watch TV shows with me and movies and stuff. And you know I have that family time and. And then grocery shopping, shopping for games, shopping for, you know, school stuff, and it, it all just... And then when I'm like, oh, yes, got some free time. Something's broken, so I have to fix it. And I don't mean with the arcade, I mean like the sink stopped up, or the toilet came off the hinge, or just something, you know? The screen fell out of our hallway window one day, and I had to do that. I mean, it's always something to take up the free time, so... I'm not complaining, that's life. You know, without those little things, then... Life would be just playing video games, and that's boring, right? Maybe? I don't know. Um... Yes, you can, Brian. You can link Steam games. Um, you cannot do it with Hyperspin, but you can do it with Rocket Launcher on hyperspin the only way you can link steam games through hyperspin is if you set them up as a pc game to begin with and don't use the interface for steam but then it won't keep track of your stuff and uh, yeah 85 steam games yeah you definitely do not want to have to sit there and set up 85 games in hyperspin alone so, that's definitely a route that you would want to take with Rocket Launcher. It makes it way easier. And plus with Rocket Launcher, um, tell me about it, Lord Marcus, about the audio thing. I have the same issue when I'm streaming. That's why I have to wear these stupid headphones. <laughs> I can only have one sound output, and so that sound is going to the stream, and I have to run the headphones from the Elgato output to pick up any sound and hear it. I can't hear it through my arcade, I can't hear it through anything. I can hear it through my PC speakers, but I'm not going to blast those. Um... But uh, definitely, I, I definitely got to pick up a sound card for this so that I can run sound separately. Because before I do anything, when I stream my arcade, I have to change the outbound sound to the Elgato. And I don't like having to do all that extra stuff. I mean, it takes literally a minute to do, but I don't like having the hassle with that. And when I'm done, I have to switch it back. So 
I need a sound card so I can run multiple streams of audio out. But, uh... Yeah, Brian, you're better off with using Rocket Launcher for that because not only will Rocket Launcher ease the, the installation of that into your front end, but it allows you to take each game separately and put separate settings on every single one. Um, I'll show you my uh, I'll show you my PC games, okay? And my Rocket Launcher UI. I don't have Steam running through here. I don't even use Steam. I know blasphemy, but I think I've used it twice because I had a buddy come on. Um, yeah, I agree, Lord Marcus. I agree totally. But unfortunately, to stream the the cab, it's all right. So PC games here. So. It's not going to show up as them being there, but they're there. Simply by the nature of the way that they get put into the system. I'm sure there's a way to make it happen so they go in. I just haven't bothered. There's no need to. So you, you could go to an individual game like Axiom Verge and configure specific game options if you want. And you could do all this stuff. You can lock it from launching if you don't want it to be played, if it's not working correctly. Um, you change the screen rotation. Some of these don't work the way they should. I will say, or the game's not compatible with it. You know, there could be problems. You can enable bezels for particular games uh, that, that play in a window, as long as the window is maneuverable. So you got these options, and these are in the normal rocket launcher options. So you can change them individually per game. And then you also have, um, let's see, PC launcher right here okay so you can go to these settings right here and change other things like as long as you point it to the application you can have it wait a, a certain amount of time before it actually starts um, if you have other things that you can start before it um, if you have to run a disk image for it such as a game that requires the disk to play you set up the disk image for it uh, you can run parameters before it. You can choose what exit method you want to use. Um, Pre-post launch settings, bezel settings, fade screen settings, all this stuff on a per game basis. Now, I know that might seem like a lot of crap to deal with, but you notice I don't really do that stuff. But if it's needed, it's there, which is a nice thing to have. Um, mostly I find I had to set the application for each one. That's really all you have to do. Just go into this menu. Once you get your PC game set up in Rocket Launcher, you just point them towards their application here. Otherwise you're going to get an error when you try to launch it, um, where it says there's no application defined. And, uh, it won't know what application to shut down when you try to exit those things but I don't I don't use the rocket launcher exit anyways for PC launcher I run AHK scripts so that everything everything on my arcade if it uses the escape button the escape key on the keyboard to do something in the game it's reprogrammed to another button and every emulator on my system uses escape to close the emulator so there's no um, no question as to some use escape, some use delete, some use backspace, whatever. It's everything uses escape. And I use AHK files for every single one. And I also change for my PC games. Boy, this is an awful lot. I could literally sit here for like an entire day just talking about this damn thing. It took me forever to set up. But okay, so PC launcher, you go into, let's say, we'll do Axiom Verge again. I've made AHK files. Well, see, that's a bad example because it has no controller profile in it. But you see, delete. I'm sorry, delete. I said escape. It's delete. Delete closes the process for everything. Um, for every game. And it has its own AHK that runs when that game starts and shuts down when the game ends. Um, this is just so... That line right there is, is simply so if you're pressing the buttons too fast... Your computer doesn't whack out. It doesn't uh, 
have a pop-up and stuff like that getting in the way. But let's see, what's a good one? I think Angry Video Game Nerd needed to... Uh... Yeah, okay, so I got stuff like this where if the controls don't match my controls, I have an AHK file that starts before these PC games that match up my controls, which are on the left, to the actual game controls, which are on the right. And that's a bit complicated to do if you don't know anything about AHK, but it's not complicated to learn. It's, it's a very simple thing to learn. It's just what you have and what you want it to be. That's it. And as long as you cancel out anything that you're using, it'll work fine. And cancel out, if it's a one-player game, you cancel out any two-player buttons, like I did here for ZX and C, so that nobody can... You're playing this one-player game, and somebody just walks up to the two-player side and starts pressing buttons and controlling your character. You don't want that to happen, so you block out their buttons on a one-player game. But, you know, it takes it takes time for PC games. They're not easy. But, I mean... PC games can be some of the coolest things to have on your arcade, though. But, I mean, I got... Uh, let's see... Some were more difficult than others. I'm not gonna lie. There was like, um... I Want to Be the Guy. I don't know if you've ever heard of that game, but it's a pretty pretty damn difficult game. Um, and it only plays in a little window. Um, and I had to use a vent ghost to get it to go to a max size window. And, uh... I run a, uh... An active marquee. It's got marquees changing and control system setups and all kinds of stuff up there going on as I'm flipping through my games. And so I'm going to show you in a second here when I get to it. I had it perfect. I had it perfect so that it, it, it starts off in a window. And I had it set up to where it maximized the game, and it was full screen, and it's an impossible fucking task to do, excuse my language. But I actually worked it out and had it working, and I was able to play this game, and people were coming over, and they were loving this game. Um, but then when I set up the Elgato device to my arcade, for some reason it changed the number of the monitor, and now it won't go... A lot of commands go through when I start this game, okay? But for some reason, it will not go full screen anymore. If it doesn't now, I'll be happy, but it won't. That's the most I get now. Is that little window. Yeah, it sucks. It was a cool game, too. But I don't know that I could play it in this little window. But, now here's the funny part. There's part two to this game. Same exact situation. It starts up in a little window. So I use the same method as I did with the first one on the second one. And this one... goes full screen. So, go figure. Yeah. <laughs> well, why would you ditch Rocket Launcher? That's the question. I could see Hyperspin because... Uh, uh, well, Launchbox launches the games. But you still get benefits from Rocket Launcher. But I guess if you're not really worried about pause and stuff like that, then it's no big deal. You know, I guess you could get by with with Launchbox and RetroArch. Um, but I don't know. I At this point, with everything that I've done with the program, there's no way I could ditch it. Even if Launchbox put in all the features to replace Rocket Launcher, I don't know that I could ditch Rocket Launcher at all. It's just too much. I'm too far in. There's no turning back, you know? I've reached the point of no return. <laughs> I am not going to stream this game, by the way. I am not about to play this right now. This game is stupid difficult. You know what? I will stream for a second. I'll show you guys. For anyone who has not seen this game, it's ridiculous. Let's see what the buttons are. Okay. So. Ah, man. This is the... This is the main screen, okay? This is the level select screen. Okay. 
I've gotten about halfway through this, this level. It's sort of a uh, retro nostalgic kind of thing. It pays homage to a lot of games. Ah, uh, see? Scares the shit out of you sometimes, too. You think you're okay at points, and it just... Ah. So you can pretty much see what this game's about right away. I'm gonna jump down here so you guys can see more. There's dudes shooting machine guns and... Uh, yeah, I'm done with this game. <laughs> it's too much. The first one... Okay, the first one's difficult. Probably more difficult than this one, but it wasn't as fun. It was pretty straightforward, and it was just getting from point A to point B and trying not to die in between. This one adds a lot to the game. It really is, you know, leaps leaps and bounds ahead of the old one, but it's still just too damn difficult to, to mess with. Oh, I'm afraid to go through any of these because of Capcom getting me last time. This game's awesome right here. Vulgar. It's, uh, if you love Rostan, which is one of my favorite old arcade games, this is a really awesome game right here. Really? Um, forgot how to play totally, but at least it's telling me how to play. terrible right now. This is just not my night. Part of it is pressing the wrong button at the wrong time here. Oh, so that kills you. All right, so there's that game. <laughs> If I was more awake right now, I'd probably do a lot better, but... These are, these make great arcade games. There's two parts. These are really fun to play in the arcade. Yeah, I have patience for this game, too, though. For some reason, I like to get games that are too fucking hard for me to beat. I don't know. I'm gonna play this, though. This is a great game, too. This is on the Wii and PC. Oh, don't tell me this screen's messed up too. Why is it in the corner? Oh, never mind. Okay, so each button does something different. It's 
spray and jump slide kick block. Okay, jump kick. I know forward does kick, right? No. Yeah. My girlfriend cannot watch me play this, really. She feels like she's gonna have a seizure. What's killer about this game is you have to start from the beginning of the level, no matter how far you were in it. Oh, I'm not coordinated right now. And then when you get to something new, you're like, oh shit, what button was it again? Really? Okay, done with that. This game's pretty awesome. Now, okay. I hope I don't get a copyright issue when I start this game. I really don't. But if they take away monetization for the video, I don't really care. I just don't want to strike. But you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. For anyone who has not tried this game, it's pretty darn awesome. It's a, uh, it's a rhythm game that you pretty much get to put your own music in. And I've added my own music to it. Not this. This is not my music. Oh god, I'm gonna get a copyright strike. Okay, let's get out of that zone. You have to dance pretty much move to the beat of the music. Oh, I step back. I'm afraid to leave the zone, though. Because this song, get out of this zone. Okay, let's go to another level here. I'm definitely getting the copyright thing on this. And you can make the game much harder on yourself by putting songs like this.
Anyway, so that's that game. What else is on here that I play a lot? I, I do play this a lot. Fix and Felix. Sometimes I'm in the mood for it. I have the Genesis version of this. But the Genesis version sucks because you have to sit through like this minute and a half long, and I'm not even exaggerating, minute and a half long intro as to how Wreck-It Ralph lost his home and Fix-It Felix Jr. coming in and, and all this stuff, the people moving in and things. Every time you start a game, I don't mean every time you start the game, I mean every time you die your lives and have to start over, you have to watch that thing. And it's so annoying. This one's cool as well. I have this on the PSP. I already played this through and beat it on PSP. This is another cool game right here. It's a Ghosts and Goblins, Ghouls and Ghosts sort of uh, homage to, to those types of games. And, and this is really cool because, I don't know if you've seen this before, but... Um, it actually is made for an arcade cabinet. They actually designed this to be an arcade cabinet. If you look, it has scan lines. Looks like an old uh, monitor. I don't know if it's translating well over the stream to show you exactly how it looks, but it has like a an old arcade look, the sound of it, everything about it. I love the uh, 8, 16-bit type PC games. I try to get as many of those as I can find. If you couldn't tell. So this is a lot like Ghouls and Ghosts. But, uh... Easier, in a lot of ways. Why did I jump into that? No, the food disappeared. Wow. Easier, but not by much.
So there's that game. <laughs> Never mind the My Little Pony stuff. I got a friend who likes that. It's not. It's not me. This game's cool. I won't get into this. Though. This is sort of more of a RPG adventure type game. And then, of course, everybody's heard of this one. But I won't play that music because they'll probably come after me for that too. Gotta love that freedom of speech on YouTube, you know? Got me nervous to, to do anything on here now. Yeah, well, you see, I know what I want to play, but unfortunately, it's all about what YouTube lets me play. So, I have plenty of ideas of what I want to play. You know, I do not own a PS4. <laughs> or an Xbox One. Or a Switch. I just got a Wii U, like... On Christmas, my family gave me a Wii U. Um, I just can't... Uh, I have a 360 and I have a PS3. I just can't uh, sit down and play through the newer games for some reason. I have nothing against them. It's just that it's very hard to keep my attention with the newer games. Um, the last new game, I said this last stream too, the last new game that I played was The Last of Us. And I loved that game. That game's fantastic. And I played through it a couple times more after that. But, I mean, the game has to be... I've heard a lot of good things about Horizon, yeah. But the game has to be extremely good to get me to sit down and play it on, on on these systems. Mostly I just play games with my kids like Skylanders and stuff. But, uh, you know, on the Wii U I like puzzle games. So I play Toad's Treasure Tracker and I play, I was playing Mario Maker for a while. I was actually really enjoying Mario Maker on the Wii U, like a lot. And I was creating levels. Only thing is, I was creating, the thing with Mario Maker is, when you create a level, you have to beat it. Otherwise, you can't post it for other people to play. And I was creating levels that were literally next to impossible to beat. And I've seen some crazy-ass levels made, and they were much more difficult than mine. But people weren't able to beat the levels that I put out. And so they got no attention. They didn't get very much attention. And I found out after not playing for a few weeks that if your levels that you create don't get a certain amount of votes or something, then you can no longer post that level and it takes it down. And I'm like, what? I spent all that time working on that level or and that level, two levels I made, and I can't even leave them posted? They, got, they get taken down after two weeks? So I was a little upset about it and I never went back to Mario Maker. Um... But that's the most I do with newer games. I mean, I have a, I have probably 1,500 games. And I'm not talking about Hyperspin. I'm talking about physical copies of games. I have, um, I don't know if you could see just above me. I'm pointing there, where I'm pointing in the camera. But that shelf is, that's one row out of four of my cartridge games. And there's like 50 games per row for that. And then I got tons of extra overflow and I got PS2 and Dreamcast and all that stuff but uh, yeah I agree Nintendo does some really weird things well I don't know why they wouldn't let you just keep it there it's not like 
your level that you created. Also, there's a cap on how many items you can have on the screen at once. And I don't know if that's a, a, a hardware issue or just them trying to be dicks, but that got in the way a couple times too. I'm creating a long, drawn-out level, intricate level, and then all of a sudden I run out of items that I can use. So I got to delete other stuff to put... It's just... I gave up on that game. Yeah, they're running out of hard drive space. Probably. <coughs> <coughs> they keep... They keep putting out the same games over and over again as far as uh, virtual console. You know, every every time they come out with a system, of course they're running out of space. They don't want to get rid of the one for the Wii, but they put up a new one for Wii U and another copy for, for the Switch, you know, and now they have three copies of the same game existing just because they want to make money off of it. Um, but yeah, I probably got about 1,500 games, physical copies of games, and... I play the Wii U right now. That's all I really play. I've actually thought many times of selling off my old games because there's some things that I'd like to get. I'd like to get an extension for my desk to go all around inside the half of the room um, and have a bar top over there hooked up for streaming and, and not use my arcade for that. M many things, you know. I'm sure I can get a pretty penny for those games if I sold them. But at the same time, I'm going to regret it. I know I'm going to regret it. I've been collecting for a while. And there's there's no fluff in my collection. There's nothing there that's that's like, I'm just going to pick up games so I have a large number of games. It's all games that I, I either played when I was a kid, or I know for a fact that they're good. Things like that. Just games that I like. You know, there's not 50 sports games on the shelf or anything but anyways i know i'll regret it if i sell them so i don't i i talk about it yeah i have highlight i have that one let's see uh, oh boy it's buried i had to hunt it down Right there. Highlight's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. I mean, it's it's got a pretty big difficulty scale because of some of the mechanics, but... I mean... Uh, it's, a fl it's not a bad game. It's really not. Like I said, not great, but it's not terrible. I mean, there's definitely fluff on the NES. And I did, I, okay, I'll admit, I do have some fluff over there. I do have some games that probably don't belong there. Um, but just a few. Just a few. Um. Yeah, but see... Like I said, I've talked about selling them, but then I just can't. When it comes down to it, I can't. One, a couple years ago, I had to sell, um, oh god, you want to talk Atari 2600? I got about 50 games over there, 60 games in a stack that could probably get thrown out the window. Um, but about two years ago, I had to sell, yeah, my copy of Chrono Trigger and my copy of, which ones? Mega Man 1? Four, five, and six on the NES. Because we needed money for Christmas. You know, if I didn't do it, the kids would be without presents and I wasn't going to let that happen. So I had to do that. And that hurt. And that was only like four games. I can't even begin to imagine how I'm going to feel if I sell the rest of them. You know, and that was for a good cause too. You know, that was for Christmas presents for the kids. You know, now I would be selling them just to get something else, you know, for, for the room. And I don't know. It's all... Uh... Yeah. I know what's going to happen. I'll post them and then immediately take the post down off eBay. I won't be able to sell them. 
And even if I sold them, it probably wouldn't be through eBay anyways. It would have to be through some type of private collector because this is too much to sell on eBay. I'm not about to ship this and have the person say they never received the package. No way. It would either be pickup or some private collector. I've reached that point where... Because I'm not going to do them one by one. There's no way. I would probably make more money, but... Uh, yeah, I can always emulate Chrono Trigger. It's nice to have the actual cartridge and play it in the Super Nintendo. But, you know... And, and I almost sold Conker's Bad Fur Day instead of Chrono Trigger. And I, I stopped myself because... I love RPGs and I love Chrono Trigger. But... Honestly, Chrono Trigger emulates almost perfectly. But Nintendo 64 has so many issues with emulation... Especially in Conker's Bad Fur Day with slowdown and stuff, I would have would not have been able to emulate Conker's. So I changed my mind. I don't know, man. Conker's is one of the games that's kind of going up in price, slowly but surely. So, I mean, I don't know if it's if it's worth selling. It'd probably be a couple of years before it's it's in the hundred and fifty dollar range, but I think it'll get up there. And if if you don't need to sell it, I'd say wait. If you need money now, then sell it now. You know, it's it's just a question of how bad you need the money because it's it's like gonna raise up in price slowly, anyways. When I got Conquers, it was forty five, I think. That was the value of the game at the time. 45 bucks and now it's up to like 90 or something oh see you're lucky you have Musha <laughs> you know what game I'd really love to find cuz Lord knows I ain't paying for it I would love to find Hagain or Hagain I'm not sure how to pronounce it but for the SNES would love to find that game because I don't know if you've ever played it, but that game is pretty damn awesome. And it's almost impossible to play on an arcade. Um, because of the reaction time you need. But uh, there's so many weapons and moves and, and the music is badass and the graphics are badass. It feels like a Genesis... It feels like a TurboGrafx-16 game. Um, but it's on the Super Nintendo. Everybody talks about Chrono Trigger and Earthbound and, and all these great RPGs, but they don't think about those great um, side-scrollers or action-type games like Hagen that, that really kind of went a step above all the others, you know? I don't know. People are stuck on these Bubsies, uh, Bubsy 2, and uh, what else? Jeez. Bubsy is a game that just... I, don't, I will never understand. I have Bubsy 1 and 2, and I will never understand how it got popular enough to get another sequel after that. That was completely horrible. Um, because those games are next to impossible to control. The dude is everywhere on the screen. And you can't see anything ahead of you for very far. It's... But anyways, okay, so the Wii U I play, and I was playing it extensively because I got Breath of the Wild, and that was pretty good. It definitely kept my attention up until I beat Ganon. Uh, yeah, the, I, I really don't understand Bubsy, and don't understand how he was popular. I don't. Uh, but there's a few that I don't understand why they were popular. Um... But that Breath of the Wild, I tell you, I was a bit... I was like, okay, I'm at Ganon. I'm at the last castle. And it was pretty awesome going through the castle. Knowing that you're not you're not subjected to taking one path. Um, I hope I'm not ruining anything for you. Uh, not subjected to take one path. You can go any way you want to get to Ganon. You can actually get to Ganon within a couple minutes. Um... I don't know, with, with the kids down the street from me, they had the games, 
And they were inside playing them damn games all the time, the Bubsy games. So I don't know. They also had the Ninja Turtles games on the NES when that was out. And those I used to borrow from them all the time. But they used to have Bubsy. And that's, that's, I guess some people heard of it more than others because that's what I heard about on the Super Nintendo. I was playing Chrono Trigger and Earthbound. I was playing those games, Final Fantasy III. Um, when NES was out, I was playing Castlevania II. Um, when I was a kid, I never played Castlevania I or three. What a shame. But I did play two and loved it. I didn't know any better. Um, used to play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1 all of the time. The first one. That was awesome. Jeez. Uh, when I was a kid, never once played a Mega Man game. And this is funny because these are some of the more popular games. Never played them. Um, played Contra once when I was a kid. Now, don't get me wrong. I was raised around video games. I was born into a time when my dad owned an Apple computer, an original Apple, and he's playing off like a... 33 kilobyte or 4 kilobyte modem so that he can play games online like Zork and stuff. I'm trying to remember my childhood. This was way, way long ago. But, I mean, and then he moved up to an Apple II, and then he moved up to a Commodore 64, and then an Amiga 500, and then an IBM. And so I was raised in a computer generation. Like, I like the, the, the Nintendo games and stuff was kind of on the side, a side thing, because I knew what computers could do. And when he got his new computers, we would always get the old ones. So we'd get hundreds of games with it, you know. I mean, we, we would play... Um, oh, man, I will show you one game that we played when I was a kid, if you, if you care. But um, we played the hell out of this game on the Amiga. I just have to find it. <laughs> Shouldn't take long. <clears throat> I remember what the uh, well first off there was this played this a lot an awful lot and this game was awesome so I mean when you got stuff like this for example you have games like this and the other kids are playing Mario Brothers there's no comparison so it was like trying to pull me from something like this to play Mario. Um, I always wanted one of those Atari computers. I always wanted one when I was a kid. But see, I was all about computers here. And it's like, you, you see stuff like this, and then the kids down the block have an NES. And you're like, okay, you know, what does the NES do that this doesn't? You know, yeah, it had different names. It had Mario and stuff like that. And I played Mario. Uh, my grandmother had a Nintendo, and every time we'd go to visit, we would play her Nintendo. But I mean, I the beholder. I was playing this when I was a kid. You know? Um, and they didn't have I the beholder on Nintendo until Super Nintendo. And even then, it wasn't as good because you couldn't use a mouse. The mouse is not compatible with it. You would think that the Mario Paint mouse would be, but it's not. <clears throat> and sure, they got Eye of the Beholder, but they did not get Eye of the Beholder 2, and I'm missing 3. I th think it's on a different system on here, but... Where is this game? I have so many memories of this other game. My my dad used to play this game all the time. Hired Guns and Syndicate. Um... Oh, God. I didn't realize I had so many games on here. I'm trying to find the one in particular. Used to play this all the time. This game is pretty awesome. It was the first game I had ever seen where you could drive a car and be in automobile combat trying to get to your destination and then you can get out of the car and go into a building and it was like a whole different game and you're looking for supplies and gasoline and food and money and then you drive again and go to shops and buy things to upgrade your car and your armor on your person and your guns. It was really, really um, huge, a huge game 
for what it did. Here we go. Persian Gulf Inferno. This game was so freaking awesome. Right now, I don't know if it would be considered racist or not. I don't know how that works. I don't get into that stuff. So, um, But it is. it does seem kind of wrong at the right now <clears throat> but the game itself is still awesome you go around these this whole building and you're searching each room for uh to dismantle bombs and rescue hostages and kill the terrorists and you find different weapons shotguns and and machine guns and stuff and here we go these games too, the D and D games. But anyways, yeah, that was that was my thing. Was the PC? We played a lot of PC stuff. But Shadowgate a lot on PC. And these games came out for the NES and the Super Nintendo and stuff like that. But they were nothing compared to the computer versions. I mean, absolutely nothing. <clears throat> yeah, they they kind of did get away with a lot of stuff in games. <laughs> um. These games were a lot of fun because you each take one side of the computer, like the keyboard, and, and you get your own buttons and you do different stuff in the Olympics. Uh, this is the other game, Syndicate, that he used to play. <clears throat> he used to love the uh, dystopian and the futuristic type games on there. Oh god, this, this game. Okay, so there were some things that the NES did better because this is horrid. This is just terrible. This is laughable. <clears throat> yeah. So the NES had its its upsides. You know, granted, the first Ninja Turtles was not the greatest game, but it was still a lot of fun. But there's no way in hell I would ever play it like this. There's no way. I tried it, by the way, and it's not easy to control. And then you got Ninja Turtles 2, of course. No music. Was it, uh... Oh god, I got time runners. I don't have time bandits. Um, was it based on the movie? You know, with the, uh, short people? Like seven, I think it, I think the story was actually based off the seven dwarves, because there was seven of them in the group. If it's not based on the movie, then you probably have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. Okay. I will tell you what, though, no system gave me as much trouble to set up as MS-DOS. Not because... I got ex the Exodos collection. Um, and if you don't know what that is, it's like thousands of DOS games. Already pre-configured. And I put that in quotations. Um, how's it going, Suplay? Um... It says pre-configured, and I'm sure in some people's systems it would be pre-configured, but it was not pre-configured on mine because nothing ran. So I had to go pick out my favorite games from the DOS collection there, and it was about 500 or so games, and then um, redo the configuration files for every single one. Um, I'll have to look up Time Bandits then. Um, but I had to set the configuration files for every single DOS game. And then after I did that, I don't like having games without videos in my system. So if I see something without a video, I have to put a video there. I have to make it or, or procure it somehow. I must have made at least 250 videos. 
I'm I'm sure that somebody that a lot of people out there with the Exodus collection would love to have my collection of videos because I made a video for every game. Some of them already had it. You can tell if they fade in. They've already had the video, I believe. But a lot of them did not have videos. They just had still pictures. So I made the videos for all of them. So I had 500 or so games. Had to make sure all every single one had a video. Had to make these generic wheel arts for them. Which I still plan to go over in the future and make better looking ones. But had to make a theme for it. This theme didn't even exist. I made this theme. So just so much stuff just to get MS-DOS working. But I'm pretty happy that I got it working. My dad's even happier. He likes coming over and seeing these, these games that he used to play. You know what? What, though, I wish that... Uh, Oh no, that wasn't uh, that wasn't DOS. I'm thinking EverQuest. That was not DOS. That was like Windows 95, I think, or 98. I would love to get EverQuest up and running on a private server or something. I used to play that for like six years, seven years, maybe, a long time. But yeah, I mean, maybe one day I'll throw my videos up somewhere. It's just, I don't remember what was mine and what belonged to um, emu movies. So it's going to be tough to separate them. And I don't want to give away... Um, Yeah, it's based on it's not based on PC the whole thing. I have uh other things on here like all t all sorts of stuff. The Nintendo consoles and arcade and stuff like that. Um but I did put a lot of PC games on there. I have the Amiga. I probably will wind up putting more like Apple and stuff like that. I just haven't got to it. I've been doing some other stuff. So I I have the Commodore 64 on here. I had to make this theme as well, because I could not find a Commodore 64 theme. But yeah, so I got C64 on here, and then the Commodore Amiga, MS-DOS, um, ScumVM. I don't have the complete set, but I have a good chunk of them. Um, mostly, I have the... Scum VM running for these games. Zack McCracken and, and Maniac Mansion. That Those are the ones that I wanted. And the Monkey Island games too. Those aren't bad. But I mean, there's a lot of good games in here. But I do not have the whole collection. It's something that I'm, I plan to do. Because my next step with my Rocket Launcher media stuff that I'm releasing is Scum VM. So before I do the media, I have to get every game in here for scum vm so they can cover them all so it is something that i'm going to be doing um rather soon but uh as of now yeah that's just just what i got for pc is just this little bit and then the pc cd roms and pop cap games but uh i'd like to add um apple 2 on here I would like to add uh, some type of Windows 95 or 98 uh, thing. I haven't looked into that too much, but I would love to emulate a lot of those games and not in MS-DOS. They have a lot of CD-based games like StarCraft and um, uh, I think it was... Uh, no, WarCraft 2 is MS-DOS. There's quite a bit. I just can't think of any right now. It's late for me. Um, but that's about my extent. I mean, I'm just trying to get stuff from when I was a kid that I know on here. Uh, I don't know too much other than those as far as old PCs go. 
But you know, it's all about looking at the videos and looking around at the other media and stuff involved with these other systems and saying, hey, that looks pretty good. I'll put that too. So I'll probably wind up putting three, four, five maybe PC systems on here. Mine's not a lot. I mean, I, I don't even know. But I would say, I'd say I'm about even with you. I mean, I have, on the top, it displays how many games are in the wheel when I, when I go by. So there's 1841 on this one, on this wheel. And that's all my main games, so you can skip all this. Okay, so this is, nope, this is different. 21 games, 6 games, 47 games, 17, 11, that's main. 18, so it's all low numbers. 22, 513 games, 576, 71, 58, 55. So there's nothing major. I mean, I'd say I'm around the 10 to 12,000 range, too. I don't have every system in here. I remember my dad was over one day, and he, he goes to this ColecoVision... And, what was it, this, he sees Burger Time, and he loads it up, and he's trying to get it to start, and I'm like, Dad, why are you playing Burger Time on the ColecoVision, why wouldn't you play it on the arcade version? And he's like, I don't know, I just wanted to play something. <laughs> so that's why I don't have every game, because it's like... How many versions of the same games do you need? You know, you can have the six different types of Intellivision that were out by different names, but they all had the same names on them. And I don't have every game for, like, PS1 or Dreamcast. Although I do have a... I, I added a uh, two-terabyte spare drive in the arcade PC just recently. So I plan to have every single PlayStation game on here and every Dreamcast game. Those I'm adding. I want complete libraries of those. And probably some more PS2. I know the PS1 complete library is about 900 gigabytes. So I'm going to get that on there and then see what else fits after that. Oh, man. You know, sitting in the seat for like 15, 20 minutes to, to mess around with a game is fine. But when you sit in the seat for two hours, it starts to get to your back. I'll be right back, guys. I'll be right back. Give me a couple minutes. I have to get up and stretch, and plus, I smoke, so... And I do not smoke around my games. So, I'll be back.
Kunya. He means to force our heroes against one another in the arena. Pets? Your time on this planet has come to an end. You again? Don't you ever learn? Long months have I contemplated the direction in which I should steer the destiny of this reality. Disintegration. I stop. Okay, sorry about that. I don't know what I'm going to do here. So, I have about 350 gigabytes worth of stuff that I worked on that I uploaded to Mega Upload. And I'm trying to give to people, but a lot of people have issues downloading it. So, it's like, I've looked into other options... But unfortunately, I know Mega Upload is not located in the U.S. I think they're um, a European site, a Europe site, or something. I don't, I don't know exactly where, but I know they're not in the U.S. I know they're not even West Coast, like the West side. It's all East. So <clears throat> I imagine people might be experiencing issues from that. But um. I don't know. Like I said, I've looked into other options, but it really comes down to what I can afford because I'm basically... I pay 20 bucks a month for this upload server as it is to get the space that I need. And it has to have a certain amount of space. And a lot of these things are like... The the US-based ones are 20 bucks a month and you get like 500 gigs. And at the rate I'm going, that's going to run out in no time. 
so I can't do that. You know, every time I release a soundtrack pack, it takes up like 30 gigs. So I want to have enough space to be able to fit everything on there that I'm looking to do. And so... Oh, I lost my chat. Hang on a second, guys. Sorry. Usually around the two hour mark in my streams, my stuff goes wacky. I don't know why, but, um, oh, did you make that? I read about that. It's, uh, uh what's it called? You, you gave a name to it. It's, um, um, ah, damn, I can't remember. No something. If that's yours, I've seen it before. All something, all filler, all killer, no filler, or something like that. Is that yours? But regardless, with the upload thing, I do what I can. Oh, okay, yeah. I know, I know, I've seen it. I've seen it before. Um, I do what I can afford, you know? I do I do what I can, and if I if I go with a U.S. server, it's basically a downgrade for me. So, you know what I'm going to do right now? Hang on one second. That's because I'm tired of looking away from the camera. So, um, it's basically a downgrade if I go with something else on space-wise. So, I have to stick with Mega Upload simply for the amount of space it gives me for the money I'm paying. So, um, I'm trying to figure out, because a lot of people are having errors and they can't download stuff. And I can't have that, because if that's happening, then it's a waste of time. There's plenty of people who are okay, and they're getting their downloads. But then there's a lot of people who aren't. So, I don't know if it's a problem on their end, or if it's a problem with Mega Upload, or what. Um. Oh, okay. I borrowed it. <laughs> It's still pretty cool, you know, for people who um, have like a barcade or something, or just they want to run a small arcade. I really, um, I don't have space for another arcade, but I have always wanted to get an Xbox kiosk or maybe one of those smaller X arcade things that hold the tank stick, the X arcade tank stick, and, um, Throw an Xbox with coin ops in there. Because I'll tell you what, there's absolutely no way I'm going to do everything that I did with this on another machine. It's not going to happen. I mean, I can I can mirror the drive. I can clone the drive. But at the same time, I'm bringing any issues that this has that are underlying or hidden over to the other machine. And I'll be fixing stuff twice if it happens. I'd rather have a no-fuss machine that's simply just there and you can just play... Without worrying about all the, you know, P's and Q's of, of, of a PC one. So I would love to get another cabinet and have an Xbox in there with coin ops. I have an Xbox. I have actually three Xboxes. 
with CoinOps 8 installed on them and 500 gigabyte hard drives. And... Uh, yeah, that's good for a living room too, yeah. Or a den or something like that where you don't want to put an arcade in there and you don't want to have tons of games on there. You just want something you could sit down and play. I could see that, that working too, yeah. I actually had... I have the worst story for you. Shit bad always happens, I understand, but... I had an, AT, an HTPC in my living room, and I had Cody, back when it was called XBMC, set up on it, and it was perfect the way I wanted it. I had maybe 2,100 movies on there. Um, all movies I owned, of course. Um, probably 350 different television shows to browse. I didn't need Netflix. I didn't need any of that stuff to pay monthly. I had this set up. And then I had a section on there for games. And I had this thing called ROM Collection Browser that you can run through XBMC and Kodi. And I had it set up perfect. And I had just almost what I have here set up on there. Minus the uh, PC games. It did have ScumVM, but not the other PC games. But all the other stuff was on there. And it was running great. Um, I even... It's funny, this was like five years ago. I even made fade screens for it. I, I made H, AHK files, and this was the time when I had to program everything because I was using Hyperlaunch, and you had to do everything by AHK. So it was a pain in the ass to get this thing set up with Hyperspin. But I did it. Or, or I'm sorry, not Hyperspin. Yeah, I eventually moved to Hyperspin from ROM Collection Browser. So I'm getting it mixed up. But ROM Collection Browser wasn't that bad. So I used that for a while. Hyperspin was on my follow-up HTPC after I tell you what happened. Um, so I have ROM Collection Browser on there with thousands of games running. Programmed that up. Artwork and everything. Even made a custom UI for it. And then I had a comic book section that had over 60,000 comic books that I made uh, custom thumbnails for each each section of, of it. So one for uh, Spider-Man, one for Punisher, one for... Uh, you know, Cable and Deadpool, you know, each one had its own thumbnail that I made so that it matched up with my, um, I wanted everything to look seamless. So it matched up with the user interface of XBMC that I was using, which was, uh, I think Aeon Knox at the time, the skin. Um, so I had those and I had about 60,000 songs, all tagged, all, all flack files, all tagged properly with the album art information, all of it on there. So all this stuff. And then our apartment burned down. <laughs> and I lost everything. You know, it wasn't a hard drive crash. It was a fire. And so I took the computer out. We, I was actually able to kind of sneak in there after the fire was done a couple days later. Um, and get what I could try to salvage what I could. Our apartment was burned halfway. It was burned, the entire living room was toast. Our front hallway was collapsed down. We lived on like the third, second floor. Um, the front bedroom where I kept my computer, I had, I literally like two months before that just bought a 24 inch touchscreen monitor and we're playing these pop cap games with the touchscreen. It was freaking awesome. Uh, I had a computer with a three monitor setup. I had some toys. I had some games and things like that, but lost it all in the fire. I was able to recover the PC, the HTPC from the living room. I was able to grab the external drives. And when I got them to our new apartment, um, cause our landlord was pretty cool. He said, uh, um, that we were good tenants and he wanted to ask us first if we wanted to move into one of his other buildings because that happened. He lost his building, it had to get demolished. Uh, but he let us move into another one of his apartments and we stayed there. It was too cramped so we had to move here. But um, I got into the new apartment, the computer and the external drives and I had to open up the bays for the externals, take out the drives and throw away the case for the computer because it smelled like smoke. Um, it was a uh, thermal, uh, not thermal take. It was a D101, I remember that. It was a $300 HTPC case. It had a, a uh, display on the front. Not not a full LCD display, but um, 
Yeah. I would I would hate to have a fire here. Um, no, no, no. I can't talk about that. Because bad shit like that happens. So, um, anyways. So I wound up having to trash the drives because the external compartments, of course, didn't keep out the heat and the water. So the drives were ruined and there went pretty much all my media. And it was just down to the drive that was inside the HTPC that had the comic books and games on it. And that drive was broken too. So I lost all of that stuff on there. And, uh, yeah. Oh, well. And then I was like, well, time to start over. <laughs> and that's when I built Hyperspin up with the Hyper Launch. And, and that's a pain in the ass. I'm gonna have to check out that other game that I was playing at first because that's one of the games I play a lot and I don't want it to be screwed up. Okay, I played this last time, but I'm gonna play it again because it's one of my favorite games, so. Yeah, we had, I mean, thank you. We had a, we live in a small community, so every, it's it's one of those ones where something bad happens to somebody in the community, everyone kind of helps. And we were, we were really lucky that everyone cared enough to, you know, there was, there was not just us, it was uh, six apartments in that building. It was a really large building. Um, and, uh, Jeez. The lady in front of us, it started in her house. But, uh, yeah, I love Robotron. Um, yeah, it's, it's tough to think about. But, you know, the community, they came, they came, they helped us out. They, uh, my, my five-year-old now was a little newborn. I mean, he was literally just born. It happened in January. He was born that October before that. So he was only a few months old. And so they gave us diapers and wipes and clothes and stuff for the baby and then um, a bunch of clothes for us to use and and uh, people were just coming day after day dropping off bags and of, of stuff and and uh, giving us furniture and all kinds of stuff and they even had a Zumbathon uh, I think it's Zumba is it Zumba Zumbathon where they do the dance exercise stuff um, her cousin, my girlfriend's cousin had a Zumbathon and they raised like $600 for us. And then the community center raised almost $2,000 for us to get back on our feet. And luckily we had just, we were just about to get our tax return. Um, so all that kind of pulled together at, at one time after that fire and helped us get back on our feet. So, I mean, it was a, it was a bad thing that happened. Yeah. But the funny thing is, it couldn't have happened at a better time. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> um, what kind of monitor do I play on? In the arcade, I play on a television. I don't play on a monitor. Would I prefer a monitor? Oh, absolutely. But I play on a Samsung uh, 120 hertz smart TV. I, do I need a smart TV function? No, I don't. Why do I play on a TV? Because the monitor that I had in here before blew out. And so I had my 32 inch monitor on my main computer that I just put in here because I had three, okay, I had three 25 inch monitors on my main computer. Um, oh, thank you for subscribing. Um, so I had three 25 inch monitors on my main computer and then I had the 32 inch that I had ordered, took away one of my 25 inch, 
put the 32 inch on there and it was real nice I had a 32 inch and two 25 inch monitors to, to do my stuff on and then I had a 32 inch monitor in the arcade um, the the one on my main computer was the TV was this this Samsung TV I hope I'm not being too confusing I'm trying to catch up with myself here it was the Samsung TV smart TV and I got a smart TV for there so that I can watch Netflix and stuff like that at night and not have to worry about my computer being on and things like that um, so when this monitor broke that was in here it was a Dell uh, 32 inch IPS monitor and I cannot even begin to tell you how much money I spent on it okay <laughs> and it blew out do you know why it blew out because of hyperspin and I'll tell you why because of hyperspin well it wasn't all hyperspin it was windows and hyperspin and together um, yeah I was thinking of that before I was thinking of that before but I had a lot of other things to buy at the at the time when I had the cash to do it um, so my nice Dell monitor um, I did not update Windows when I installed Hyperspin on here I said I'll get to it later I'll get to it later and then I forgot to do it and apparently if you don't update Windows after a clean install and then you put Hyperspin there's a lot of problems with Flash the Flash player so what it was doing was I would leave my arcade on overnight because I was working on it constantly when I first got it so I would leave my arcade on overnight and hyperspin would freeze up and get a white screen of death the flash screen when you get that little gray exclamation point in the middle and it would sit there for hours with that white screen on and I never knew it was that serious until the day that it blew out the backlight in my monitor now I can replace the backlight the monitor is still sitting in my closet over there but I just never got to it so eventually that will go back in here but I'll tell you another thing if you ever think about a rec room master's cabinet just know that the screen you put in there better be the fucking screen you want to keep in there because this thing is not easy to take apart and replace something in it is such a pain to get in there speakers not a big deal I even have a 25 inch monitor up top as my marquee not a big deal if I had to replace it the way I set it up I just slide the old one out slide the new one in and hook it up but the screen you don't want to talk about replacing the screen seriously it 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 is a bitch so um see can you talk about your arcade cabinet setup OS current front end do you have two to three LCDs can you get your settings wheel snap setup on your mega account okay so I cannot put the wheels and I cannot put the snaps it's not that I can't it's that I won't it's a personal choice I will not put up other people's work like that um, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with you asking because there's a lot of people who do and you never know who will and who won't but emo movies makes their money they make their living off of providing these these videos for people so I'm not gonna take that from them and the wheels the wheels are actually pretty easy to find now if you are referring to the DOS videos I did absolutely I'll, I'll put them up I could put them up and put a video out for the for the DOS theme and videos and and stuff like that I'll put them out the same time that I put out the scum VM uh, rocket launcher media uh, so keep an eye out for that when you see the video for scum VM I'll also put up my DOS stuff but as far as like Nintendo or Genesis and stuff like that that's that's on emu movies I won't take their things <clears throat> um, my arcade cabinet setup um, I have a lot of videos on my channel that show most of it of course it's like anybody's cabinet and front end it's always changing so if I were to if I were to attempt to keep people up to date on my cabinet I'd be making a new video every week just showing what I did to it um, so basically uh, it's hard to hard to show and I know that if I there's no way I can get a camera over to it to show you but 
Yeah, that that'll happen too. You can get launch box. You don't need big box. You just get launch box, put your systems in, scan them, and it'll get a ton of artwork for you for free. And you don't have to pay for launch box. It's big box that you pay for. So that's a good idea actually. Um, I know I did that for Nintendo 64, I think it was. I needed a little help finding some stuff, and it was a lot faster. Um, but it's not always accurate. I will say that. It's not always accurate. And when I did Nintendo 64, see, when I do my media and I try to find backgrounds for each game, I don't like to have any words or any logos on them. I like to have clean artwork, just a picture. And Launchbox will download a lot of stuff with logos on it or uh, wallpapers with the game logo and stuff like that. And I prefer, I prefer the cleaner look of of no words or anything on there. But that's just me, and that's what I I give out to people because that's what my preference. Um, so as for the machine though, uh, to play, I have the 32 inch for the main screen. Uh, that I play all the games on and then on the top I have a 25 inch LCD that's sort of segmented off I could take a picture but I don't think it's gonna show up because there's no way I can get my camera over there and I don't have it set up to stream um, but I can show you what it shows on my marquee right now with a picture and hope that it displays properly on the camera all right, let's see if this shows on the camera. So basically what that is is on the bottom is a uh, marquee. And I made those marquees for each system. They each have their own. And I run Hypermarkey to display the wheels that I customized. I put, the, I, I made the wheels fit to a specific dimension so that I don't have them stretched out or too too tall or too wide or anything. They're all the same dimension inside of a, a PNG image, a clear PNG uh, image to keep them straight, okay? And so those wheels pop up for every game and then the generic marquee behind it and then on the main wheel I have a separate marquee that displays in that area on the bottom and the top right is where I keep my control panels that shows all the buttons for the game that I'm currently playing or currently have selected and the top left is sort of like a fan art section it's just a little picture of the system that I'm playing and then down the center just above the marquees it has scrolling text uh, with a description of the game itself that I'm over and it shows how many players it is first. First and foremost it says how many players the game is. If it's one to two players, four players, whatever, so that I know you know if somebody's browsing the game they know hey this game's two players let's play or this game's only one player let's not play this you know. It's easier with my family members when they come over to play they know what's what's playable and what's not. <clears throat> and then of course you know I have the fade set up and then I have the stuff that I work on I'll show you that here I've paused completely set up for all the systems that I have here every system that I have is set up with pause for uh, through rocket launcher um, if you're looking for PC specs I run a i3 I'm probably gonna have to say this every stream I run an i3 it's a uh, 3770 or something. I don't know. Something like that. Um, and I run a GeForce 1060 GT. It's 1060 or 1050. I'm bad with this. You know, a year, a little over a year ago, I went shopping for these parts. And I just got the card like a couple months back. So... I don't, I don't really worry about the PC inside the arcade because it runs everything fine. The only reason I got a card for the PC was because the card I had in there belonged to my main PC and I wanted to put it back. Um, my main PC runs two 680 GTs with four gigabytes of video RAM each. And those are monster cards. I don't see, they're old, but I don't see having to replace them for a long time. The only thing I don't get off of those is um, 
4K and virtual reality. But I'm not worried about either of those because I don't have a 4K monitor. I just picked up two 32-inch Samsung monitors for my main PC um, because of all the art editing and stuff. My OS preference? My preference is probably Linux, but the OS I'm forced to use is Windows. <laughs> A lot of these things don't even work on Linux, so I have to have Windows there. Um, Windows 7 for emulation, yeah. I used to use Windows XP back when Hyperlaunch was a thing. I have some groovy music on here. I like this. I used to use Windows XP, but um, the RAM limitations really kept me, it held me back from doing a lot of things I wanted to do on there, so I switched to Windows 7 Pro and I have 32 gigs of uh, RAM in there, so I don't have any issues now. Now, okay, Windows 10. I would totally use Windows 10, but only for one reason. Killer Instinct on the arcade. That's it. I wouldn't do it for any other reason. Because um, there is no reason for me to upgrade to it. Not on the arcade anyways. But I'd love, I would love to have the new Killer Instinct game on my arcade. But even that, even that I've kind of forgotten. Because now that they have Marvel vs. Capcom 3 on, on PC, um, and the new Injustice is coming out. Oh god, is Injustice Windows 10 only? I hope not. I really hope it's not, because I would love to have Injustice 2 on here. But I do have... Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 the game itself, I just haven't put it on my system yet. I gotta get to that. Yeah, I don't boot straight to the front end either, because I use stuff that uh, that needs Windows to call up a window. It needs uh, Explorer to run. I was mentioning that earlier. I need Explorer to run my uh, Plane 9, my graphic equalizer. So whenever I run my jukebox, um, yeah, if you just run a basic front end um, like Mamoa or or um, you know something where it's just running one program, I can see booting straight. But if you run Hyperspin or Launchbox or something, I would never boot straight. I would just hide it. I would just there's programs to hide Windows rather than boot straight to it, where it turns your mouse cursor into a dot. It gets rid of the boot screens. Um, you can replace your uh, your um, Oh God, loud! It's it's almost 3 a.m. and I'm I'm going blank here. You can replace your all your boot screens and stuff like that. It's cool stuff, but I would never actually high. I would never actually bypass Explorer. Um, because you never know what you're gonna add. You're just gonna change it later, and it's gonna cause problems. What's the difference with desktop mode? Oh, desktop mode, like launch box. Like without the big box thing, okay. Yeah, you know, I don't use launch box. I, I do not have it yet. I haven't uh, put down the $20, $30 to get the basic one yet without the updates. Um, I'm kind of doing my own thing right now with rocket launcher and I don't wanna, It's it's a tough call, I want to. I want to move to LaunchBox because it's really cool. But at the same time, I don't want to get caught up in fixing LaunchBox up and lose track of what I was doing with Rocket Launcher because I sort of have a goal here with Rocket Launcher. And 
Um, yeah, and I'm pretty happy with the hyperspin the way it looks right now. Um, I would definitely do a HTPC with LaunchBox, though. I will say that. I think LaunchBox... I do, I do think there's some skins that make it look great for an arcade, but the majority of the skins for LaunchBox, I think, are more fit for an HTPC than a, than a cabinet. Maybe it's just me, but I just see it that way. Like, when I look at their skins, I see Cody. Yeah, I know I could get Rocket Launcher into LaunchBox, but that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is setting up LaunchBox. Because I'm too much of a per perfectionist, and I'm not going to want to stop setting up LaunchBox until it's perfect. And that's going to take a lot of time away from my Rocket Launcher work that I'm doing, the goal that I have with Rocket Launcher. I know, it's it's it, you just basically change the plugin, just change the direction that they work. And as long as you set up your systems with LaunchBox properly, then they'll work with Rocket Launcher. It just sort of works. But... Um, that's that's not the part that concerns me. I'm just concerned that with a programmer like LaunchBox, um, an, an open source theming program like LaunchBox, I'll get I'll get caught up in in that, and I've already thought about ideas for themes, and I don't even have the program yet. So I'm just afraid that I would get caught with that. Yeah. Yeah, but if I, 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 well, I sort of strayed away from the HTPC thing, but if I ever built another one for the living room, because we're talking about getting a projector and a projector screen, a pull down projector screen to watch movies on, and I would want a full blown HTPC if we did that, but our previous one, I was still using parts from the computer that was in the fire, and it finally went out on us. It started getting all glitchy and messed up so I had to replace it and instead of building another PC I got an Amazon Fire TV and put Plex on there and run I run a Plex server on my uh, my main computer here with all the media runs perfectly fine that's all we need for the living room for now but if I ever built another HTPC I would probably put LaunchBox on it yeah Yeah, and I I agree. And and honestly, if here's 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 the way I see it though. If you're just I don't want to sound like an asshole when I say this cuz I'm nobody special. But let's just say you're the average person, no YouTube channel, no anything like you're just building an arcade, okay? And you're looking for a front end. A lot of people will suggest LaunchBox because it's the newest thing. It's cool. It has all the new features. He's constantly adding to it. It's great. So then that person will go with LaunchBox. Or that person might see Hyperspin and go with Hyperspin. Um, but with someone in my position where I actually do run a YouTube channel and I just passed the 1,400 subscribers and I have people looking up to me for information... I kind of feel it's my, it's going to sound funny, but I kind of feel it's my duty to get LaunchBox and learn the ins and outs of it at some point so that I know how it works with Rocket Launcher. You understand what I'm saying? Because if Rocket Launcher is my thing and Rocket Launcher deals with the front ends, it's kind of important that I learn those front ends a bit. Um... And I did mess with LaunchBox itself on my arcade, but I have yet to do Big Box. I don't know. I'm I'm in, I'm kind of between a rock and a hard place right here. I I, I want to get it. I want to check it out, and I want to learn about it. But at the same time, and, and I also feel like I have to learn about it at this point because there's a lot of a lot of hype around it, you know. And and for me to sit here and tell people I don't know, I don't use LaunchBox, I and scratch my head. It seems kind of unprofessional, that's all. And I think that in my line of, of, in my position, I should learn it. I should get to know it at least a little bit. Um, so so there, there's the rock and the hard places that I know when I do start learning it and I do get it, I may not want to put it down. 
So now you understand where I'm at here. That's where I'm at. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You know, if anybody asked me what front end they should go with and they were new to emulation, uh, um, well, not emulation, because I'll tell you what, before you suggest any front end to somebody who's new to emulation, you should suggest to them emulation instead first. They need to mess with the emulators before they mess with the front end. They have to learn how these things work. You can't expect to just jump into building a front end around things that you don't know, you know? So that's the first step, is messing with the emulators, getting them to work, and then you work in the front end. But my suggestion to them would be LaunchBox. It absolutely 100% would be LaunchBox. Um, and that's without owning the product. I sit in on the, the dev uh, sessions that, that Jason does and listen in and, and I see how much dedication he has and the dedication he has alone is enough to prove that that's the, that's the place you want to be right now. That's the program you want to go with right now. It's very hard to find dedication behind some of these programs, especially one that's built around grown men acting like kids. <laughs> Um, I have, I have, um, I have tested attract mode on a Raspberry Pi, but it was not my Raspberry Pi. So it was a friend of mine. He had it, um, and I did play it. It's not quite on a Raspberry Pi. It's not quite the hyperspin that people compare it to. It's a little slower. It's a little bit, um, how do I say? It's like if hyperspin, they're essentially the same thing. They, they look, they look similar, but if hyperspin was the 1080p, then attract mode would be the 720p. You know, it's still clear, but you just kind of know something's off. It's trying to be 1080p, but it's not quite. Um, it's it's good for a Raspberry Pi. I'll give it that. It's an excellent front end to have in an arcade when you don't want to spend all that money on a on a PC, a full blown PC. But it does limit you on what you can do by going with a Raspberry Pi. Um, well, it's fast on a PC. Um, or maybe he had a Raspberry Pi too. I don't know, cause it seemed kind of laggy to me. Um Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're referring to a Raspberry Pi cuz you got to do that by FTP and once you do it you're kind of stuck that way unless you redo it. Yeah. It's a pain in the ass with the Raspberry Pi. Um on a uh, a track mode through PC is a little bit more. You know, Retro FE though, if I had to find okay, I'm going to give you my my top three emulators in the order that that I feel they uh, they belong for PC arcade cabinets: Launchbox, Retro FE, and Hyperspin. In that order, okay. Launchbox is number one. Retro FE is number two, and Hyperspin. Why do I put Retro FE as number two? Because Retro FE, if you look up Retro FE, it looks exactly like Cody. It's not trying to be something else. It looks like Cody. And it's the perfect one for an HTPC. LaunchBox is good. It's great. But they're somewhere in between Arcade Cabinet and HTPC. They're kind of in that balance. Retro FE is HTPC all the way. Um, now, don't get me wrong. They have a lot of user-made themes in Retro FE that are decent, they're decent. They don't have a huge user base and I don't wanna piss off anybody in the channel right now. It looks like six or seven people in the channel right now. I don't wanna piss anyone off if you use RetroFE or if you develop for RetroFE or whatever the case might be. I'm not saying RetroFE is bad. I'm just saying it doesn't have as much support from its user base as some of the other ones do when it comes to creation. And they borrow a lot. 
So, but it is an excellent program. It's lightning fast, and it has a great theming engine, so you can do with with it just about anything you want. But it is straight up HTPC, um, and Hyperspin is straight up arcade. I would not want to have Hyperspin on an HTPC. I really wouldn't, because it's way too arcadey for that. So you have the mid ground is the number one, and then the other two numbers for me. This is my choice, mind you are the both sides of the spectrum um yeah they, they definitely have the best support that i've seen um as for the raspberry pi i would go emulation station i wouldn't really go anything else i would just go emulation station it's it was built for the raspberry pi attract mode was built as a uh it was built as a PC front end that got moved to the Pi, pretty much. That's what it is. But Emulation Station was built for the Pi. So I would stick with that. It's it's a beautiful front end. People are coming out with new, new looks for it. Matter of fact, there's a, an 8-bit one that looks just freaking awesome. Simply Austin showed it on his channel for a little bit. But there's an 8-bit skin for RetroPie that looks freaking amazing um it made me want to get a retro pie at that time but uh i wound up getting an amazon tv instead um i got about eight minutes left and then i have to hit the hay because i got a five-year-old that has to go to preschool tomorrow he's graduating preschool on thursday so they're they're having a party for him and stuff well for his class not just him Yeah, I'll tell you, back in the day, I'm talking five, six years ago, maybe even seven at this point, I don't I don't remember, Hyperspin had amazing customer support, amazing support. You go there, you ask a question, some of them were rude, I mean, some of them were. You get those, those know-it-alls, you know, which I, I try not to ever be a know-it-all. You know, I may know something, but I don't make other people feel stupid when I tell them. And I think that's sort of what, what, uh, how do I put this without pissing off anyone in the hyperspin community? I think that's what sort of created the launch box and the attract mode and the retro FE and, and all these other front ends. I think that it stemmed from people just getting fed up with hyperspin in general the difficulty scale when hyper launch left and became rocket launcher um I, I know they left on good terms but when they did it kind of made a little bit of uneasiness in hyperspin's area in their area of the, of the internet um but there was a lot of ignorance flying around on the hyperspin forums at that point and a lot of people asking questions and just people shutting them down and there was no help and it's nothing like now now you can go into the Hyperspin Forum or the Launchbox Forum or the Rocket Launcher Forum or the Emu Movies Forum. It doesn't matter where you go. You ask a question, people are more than happy to help you. They're more than happy to share the information with you that they have. Back then, it was just, I know and you don't. Too bad. That's how it, that's how it felt when you went to the Hyperspin. And it was really tough. Um, oh, I understand. But I'm not saying that that hyperspin created these things what i'm saying is it's it sort of set the it set things in motion because hyperspin was basically the king of the front ends for a while five or six years ago it was the king i mean there was no other front ends out there that could compete with it whatsoever and then people got wise to the shit going on people got wise this is just the underlying stuff okay this is things that i saw happening is a lot of ignorance in the forums drove people away and maybe drove them to other things maybe drove them to checking out other possibilities in front ends and giving more attention to those and because those got more attention they felt the need to improve um 
Yeah, it was it was huge. I mean, Hyperspin was really big, and it's just like XBMC. You know, Plex has been around for for geez, t- ten years I think. Plex has been around since oh, I don't even know. Two thousand and seven, I think it came out. Two thousand and six, something like that. They were created, and they were never even known until XBMC changed its name to Cody, and then Plex just sort of blew up. And now people are switching to Plex for servers. I mean, it's just it's the way it happens. It's the way it happens. When there's a big change, people kind of don't want to be in a place where it's it's rock a rocky road, you know? They don't want to be where there could be trouble. The, oh, the ship is sinking, you know, people are going to jump out. And that's kind of what happened with Hyperspin. And now, there's like no support there. You get you get the occasional people that help out. And, and don't get me wrong, the, the devs over there are really cool people. It's just that it's a ghost town, almost. People go in, they give their media to people, and they leave. And people come in, and they download the media, and they leave. And it's just a ghost town in there, you know? At least this is just what I see. I mean, maybe I'm logging in in the wrong times, but I'm on those websites all the time reading people's stuff, and I try to keep up with what's going on. And it's it's really, you know, nothing like... Hell, even Rocket Launcher's forums get more uh, passed through than Hyperspin's at the moment. And Hyperspin has more people and... It's a more popular website. I, I don't. I don't understand. I'm gonna make enemies with this right now. I already know it. Um. <laughs> Last time I said something about hyperspin, I lost like eight subscribers. So it happens. It happens. I'm not gonna hide how I feel about things, though. If I feel a certain way about something, I don't hate hyperspin, and I don't hate anybody that that works for their company or anything. I just wish that the support was there that Launchbox has that Jason shows Launchbox. I wish we had, you know, people popping online saying, let's work on this today, people. You know, that's nice to have. It's a good feeling to know that something you paid for is paying for itself because you always had that support. And you just don't get that anymore with with, uh, Hyperspin, unfortunately. You know, they came out with an update not too long ago and I remember seeing a letter um, from, I forget, one of the devs over at Hyperspin. And he released a statement. And he said that he got a lawyer. And they're going to be hunting down people who are selling hard drives with pre-configured Hyperspin installed because it's copyrighted material that they're selling. And that they were going to stop all of the sales. Actually, one guy did get shut down. Um... He lost all of his... He lost his YouTube channel. He had to open a new YouTube channel. Uh, I think it was Arcade something. Um, yeah, to play. I know. I know. Um, but at the same time, people don't have to agree with your opinion. You know? And YouTube is very... Very much so where if you don't agree with someone's opinion, you just leave. You know? You just unsubscribe. And it's that easy. So... You know, but I'm not going to hold back my opinion just because of that. You know, if people subscribe to me because they agree with my opinion, that's exactly what I want in my channel. I want people who agree. If they want to unsubscribe because they don't agree with me, then, I mean, that's that's the breaks. That's how it is. Um, yeah. Um, and I hang out on Facebook all day in these video game groups. You want to talk about butt hurt? Good Lord. Ugh. It's like meme central. I always know which meme is like the newest one the minute that it happens because of these video game Facebook groups. Um, but anyways, I mean, I know Jason. I'm not taking anything away from Jason either. He did a lot and he still does a lot of work. I'm not saying that Hyperspin is at all responsible for the production of Launchbox and how it's evolved over time. All I'm saying is that um, 
with everything that happened with hyperspin it was like a perfect storm during that certain area of time that chased people away to the arms of another okay that's that's basically all i can how i can put it is chase them away and they found something that was going to treat them better and then they when they found it they said hey guys come over here you know they get their friends involved they get other people on the forums and then the people that stay in hyperspin are like hey what's going on over there you know they're giving away free cookies you know and the, so they start to wander over there and it happens and that's how everything happens you know every king falls and that's how it happens it, it, it one mistake can lead to another to another to another and yeah. And that that as well. That's that's really the killer one. You know, p uh, like I said when Rocket Launcher became Rocket Launcher, it, it it moved and became Rocket Launcher. Hyperspin is still using the Hyperlaunch as their program. They're not really telling people to get Rocket Launcher. They're relying on Hyperlaunch. And Hyperlaunch is still that 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 I don't even know if it's the right word, that convoluted file that you have to go in and and change everything and then re um um just it's so much stuff to do and people go to the rocket launcher forums and they're like why can't i get this system to work in hyperspin i'm using hyperlaunch well no don't use hyperlaunch you should use rocket launcher you know because hyperspin isn't telling them that so i don't know anyways it is past 3 a.m and I usually cut the stream at three hours. It's at three hours and two minutes, so I'm gonna have to cut this short. Um, I have plans to stream a lot more often than I have been before. I'd like to keep my channel active, especially since I just joined uh, Cursed Gaming Network a couple weeks back. I'd like to do more streams. Um, uh, Uh, and you know what? If if you're new to the channel to play, you'll soon discover that I really like sharing my opinion. <laughs> um, so, like I said, I plan to stream a lot more often. Um, sometimes I'll play games. Sometimes I'll talk. I don't know. Usually it, it winds up in a conversation, which is fine with me. I enjoy either one. Um, but uh, a couple days, I'll probably be on Friday night, Friday night, and my kid gets out of school soon, so I'll be on a little bit more often than that. So every couple days, just watch out for me, and I'll be on. All right, guys, and to the other five people in the channel, thanks for joining. Um, any people who popped in and out, thank you for joining in, and everybody have a good night. <laughs>